All right, it just arrived on my doorstep, so let's go ahead and unbox the latest in Samsung's devices, which is technically a rehash of an already beloved smartphone from earlier this year. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This is the unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition. All right, S20 FE 5G, you do get the 5G connectivity here, so it is a little bit of a future-proof phone. But one of the best parts about this device is that it brings a lot of what made the S20 so nice, uh, and yet puts it in a body that is $699. It's definitely a lot more affordable than many of Samsung's own flagships, which kind of begs a question that I'll ask a little bit later. I already like the way that the box has a bunch of these icons, maybe you can call them emojis, sprawled across the entire cover. Uh, and of course, at the bottom there, it says S20 FE 5G. Over on the side, same thing. It's supposed to be Fan Edition, so this is a phone made for fans. Only fans. The unboxing experience is really simple though, and I feel like Samsung has really been dialing back some of the extras that you get in at least the North American release boxes, because uh, one thing that I've learned from my Galaxy Z Flip unboxing is that there's always a little flap underneath the top cover. And sometimes in here you get a couple of extras, like the SIM tool, for one, and potentially a case. Now, I'm not going to expect that Samsung will include a case with any of their smartphones since the Galaxy Z Flip, because I have hoped for it and it's never happened. And again here, doesn't happen. Taking a look at the actual device itself, I have what is called the Cloud Navy Edition. I'll talk more about the design and the specifications after we get it out of the box. Uh, however, the Cloud Navy is just one of many different colors uh, that you can choose from already uh, that include different ones like lavender, there's a really awesome red color, but in my case, it's the Cloud Navy. And then the other box contents just include the fast charging adapter, which is a USB-A connector though. And of course, that means that the cable that you get with this is USB-A to USB-C. As I start to power on the device and go through the setup, there are a couple of things that I noticed right off the bat. The display is flat. This might actually make it so that the phone is a bit easier to handle than some of the other edge panels that they have in flagship Samsung devices. Uh, we all talk about how palm rejection might be not so good in certain Samsung devices or any device that has a curved display. And in this case, you're not gonna have those problems. There is a curve on the back though with this frosted blue color uh, and the curve on the back will allow the phone to really sit nicely in one's hand. There's one more thing that I noticed with this display though, and it's there's a little bit more bezel. Uh, with the front-facing camera up top being dead center, it makes me think that this phone has some real A-series vibes to it. Just sort of popping back real quick, I do want to just show off a quick video from the Samsung A51, not even the A71. The one that I reviewed for Pocket Night was the Galaxy A51, and I don't know, just the way that the S20 FE looks reminds me of the A-series phone. And in a lot of ways, that's perfectly fine because what the FE edition is supposed to do is create a type of smartphone that has many of what made the S20 so nice, but put it in a package that might be a little bit more accessible to the casual user. The fans, if you will. Only fans. It seems like you won't miss out on plenty of the amenities that come in flagship devices. Like in the setup, I can already see that there's not only face unlock as usual, but there's an in-display fingerprint reader, which I immediately got set up. Now that we're finally into the phone's interface, one of the first things I wanted to do was go straight to the display settings and take a look at some of the options we have there. Now, this is a full HD plus 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display. It also includes 120 hertz refresh rate. The thing that I noticed here though is that the word adaptive is not here. Uh, so while you have 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate on let's say those curved displays of the S20 and the Note 20 devices, in this case on the S20 FE, it's 120 throughout it seems. And I went ahead and did a little bit of scrolling. You might not be able to see it on camera here, but I can definitely see 120 here in just the menus. Not adaptive. I do want to draw a little bit more attention to those bezels. It might be something that some of you out there are not happy with, but I gotta say, having a flat display, even if there's a little bit of bezel, means that handling will probably be one of the highlights of the S20 FE. I mean, the phone is not small by any means. Again, this is a 6.5 inch AMOLED display. Uh, you get plenty of screen real estate to enjoy your media and whatnot, but it's that curve on the back without any curves on the front that seriously add to the handling experience. As far as the internals are concerned, you have the Snapdragon 865, not the 865 Plus, so don't go expecting this to be the top end or the latest and greatest of smartphones at the moment, but you also have 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. As far as the battery is concerned, you have the 4500 milliamp hour battery that is fast charge capable, but also allows for fast charging in both directions. 
All right, so let's talk about the design a little bit. It might be somewhat simplistic in the sense that you don't have any like crazy flourishes and even the camera hump is not super big. Uh, but what Samsung said during the announcement of the fan edition device here uh, is that they derived some inspiration from the mystic bronze design cues from the Note 20 Ultra. Ultimately for me, that's okay. I don't mind the fact that this is a plastic backing, especially for the price that you're getting this, you're still getting quite a few high-end premium experiences in the S20 FE when compared to the main flagships that could cost like twice as much. And also with the plastic backing and just the sort of sturdy build, this is an IP68 rated phone anyway. All right, so let's jump into the cameras. The front facing camera here is a 32 megapixel shooter and that's why I wanted to start off with that because it's a pretty good spec to have for a front facing camera. The frame is also fairly wide. So if you are the type of person to do some, let's say a roll or vlogging shots using a front facing camera, this is not too bad. You can get pretty good of an angle without having to reach too far. And also 4K at 60 frames per second is available on the front facing camera. Now we're going to get into the rear cameras and the S20 is making a comeback in the fan edition, but it made me think about a question I want to pose to all of you and then I might actually revisit it in a future video. Look at these cameras. If we're going to take a look at the S20 as a line and see how Samsung thought these features belong in the fan edition, well then here's my question. What exactly did Ultra mean earlier this year then? The reason why I ask this is because clearly the essentials and all of the fundamentals that are required for the general user, the fan if you will, are what they clearly prioritized. You're not going to get super high numbers here other than the front facing camera, which is a nice consideration. You get a 12 megapixel main camera, you get a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and an 8 megapixel telephoto. That telephoto allows for 3 times optical zoom, which then hybrids up to 30 times. So when I think back to the S20 Ultra, it makes me realize that that was like the experimental phase of Samsung for 2020. They were basically seeing how far they could go until the rest of us would think, oh my goodness, this is too much uh, to ask for in any one smartphone. And that had to do with how hefty the phone was, how big the camera hump was, and the fact that it literally said 100 times space zoom on there when no one even went past probably 50 at the very most. Even here, there's no branding here. It's just a simple camera hump that kind of reminds me of the A-series line once again, and there's nothing here to suggest that it's going to do something that you'll never use. <laughs> of course, I will take this phone out for a real-world camera test, and you'll see a few shots just for now in this video. Uh, but one thing I do want to show off is that many of the modes that have been introduced in Samsung's current flagships are making it to the FE, which I think is the biggest deal here. The main thing would be 4K at 60 frames per second, which is available on the front and the back. Definitely on the front, it's something that I love they considered putting in the FE. Uh, but the other thing that I saw is Pro Video Mode. Now, Pro Video Mode allows for a couple of great things. Uh, not only does it allow for more control for the fan, uh, the more casual user perhaps, uh, to get creative with their video content, but it also includes a feature from the Note 20 Ultra, which is the Bluetooth audio recording. Obviously, I will show that off a little bit later, but you have probably already seen me test this out not only on the Note 20 Ultra, but also on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. Ultimately, this concept of a FE or fan edition has been so interesting to me, and I love that I get a chance to take a look at it right now. Uh, with the S20 FE, it, this is Samsung showing kind of their cards and what they believe fundamentals truly are for the average user. And I think that they've hit a lot of the right marks with this one. And so there you have it, an unboxing and a quick look, first impressions, on the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE Fan Edition. This is a phone that is made for only fans. Kidding aside, I do want to reiterate that the Fan Edition devices are so interesting because it shows what Samsung is prioritizing as fundamentals. And by creating a phone like this, they might have created a very good barrier of entry for those of you who want to have a flagship Samsung experience without breaking the bank. So let's see how this phone fares in my upcoming coverage and of course in my final reviews. Look forward to the real world camera test on this phone. I'll take it to one of the many locations that I typically go to, get some pictures with it, let you know what the experience is like uh, creating with this phone. And then of course you can look forward to my top complaints and takeaways as my final video. From there, go ahead and get into the comment sections down below. Let me know what you want to know about this device. And at the very least, drop some likes on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you once again for watching and take care of yourselves and each other. Until my next video, I'll just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody. Blended matcha, what you know about that?